all. In this video, we will learn about dentinogenesis imperfecta. It is a developmental disturbance affecting the structure of teeth. It is also called as hereditary opalescent dentine and it affects both primary and permanent dentition. Moving on to the definition, hereditary developmental disturbance of dentine which may be isolated or in association with a number of syndrome. Now we will look into a brief etiology. Dentine normally contains minerals 70%, organic matrix 20% and water 10%. The organic matrix is made up of collagenous protein and non-collagenous protein. The collagenous protein is mainly type 1 collagen encoded by the gene Col1A1 and Col1A2. The non-collagenous protein is derived from dentine cyclophosphoprotein and is encoded by the gene DSPP. Mutation of Col1A1 and Col1A2 gene result in type 1 dentinogenesis imperfecta. While the mutation of DSPP genes result in type 2 and type 3 dentinogenesis imperfecta. Next, we will look into the classification. First is the Shields classification. Type 1 is dentinogenesis imperfecta with osteogenesis imperfecta. Type 2 is dentinogenesis imperfecta without osteogenesis imperfecta. Type 3 is Brandywine type, which is a rare type, characterized by pulp exposure and periapical lesion. Next is the revised classification. First one is without osteogenesis imperfecta, which corresponds to type 2 of Shields classification. Type 2 is Brandywine type, which corresponds to type 3 of Shields classification. Now, we will explain Shields classification in detail. First is the type 1. It is most common in deciduous teeth. Teeth are opalescent because of mutation of genes encoding type 1 collagen. As it is associated with osteogenesis imperfecta, bones are brittle and are fracture prone. A characteristic extraoral feature of type 1 is blue sclera. Next is the type 2. It is the most common type. It occurs due to mutation of DSPP gene. It affects both dentition and the teeth appears blue green or amber brown and opalescent. Radiographically, it shows bulbous or bell-shaped crown with constricted cervical area. Narrow roots, root canals and pulp chamber are smaller and completely obliterated. When subjected to occlusal stress, enamel may split from dentine. Histologically, enamel is normal except its peculiar shade. Dentine is abnormal with irregular tubules and large areas of uncalcified matrix. Pulp chamber is obliterated due to continued deposition of dentine. Type 3 is the rare type and it affects both dentition. It is also caused by mutation of DSPP gene. In this type, crown wears off rapidly. Radiograph shows huge pulp chamber and thin shell of dentine, giving a shell teeth appearance. In type 3, enamel is fractured due to abnormal underlying dentine. It causes multiple pulp exposure and periapical lesions like periapical abscess and apical periodontitis. This figure shows periodontitis and periapical abscess due to pulp exposure. 
Now we will recap the common features of all type. Crown has a tulip shape due to constricted cervical area. DEJ is not scalloped, no dentinal hypersensitivity because of the absence of odontoblastic process. The teeth are not caries prone because of obliteration of dentinal tubules. There is little scope for entry of microorganisms and all the teeth are amber brown and there is loss of enamel, mostly attrition in cuspal and incisal edges. Now let's look at how to treat dentinogenesis imperfecta. The main aim is to prevent enamel loss and subsequent loss of dentine through attrition. For repairing posterior teeth, cast metal crown and for anterior teeth, jacket crowns are used. That was a brief description about dentinogenesis imperfecta. Hope you all got some idea about it. For more videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel Guidant PSMDC and follow us on our Instagram Guidant.